Hey everybody, Rebellion Ranch with you today. I'm um, going to do a little bit of a different type of video where you just get to enjoy some B-roll of the animals being the animals. And I get to answer your questions that came in. Uh, the question I want to answer today is, do we kill coyotes on the ranch? And that leads to the larger question of, you know, how do we deal with all the predators that you have to deal with as a rancher? Uh, short answer to that is it depends, you know. It's pretty much only the coyotes that make bad decisions. Um, right now, I'll just address the coyotes, but we'll get to the other predators uh, a little later in the video. Obviously, you know, it's our responsibility, one of our responsibilities for our livestock to protect them. So there's a couple ways that we go about that. Um, you know, for us, it's guardian dogs, specifically Anatolian shepherds, which uh, just absolutely love them. They've been bred for several millennia at least to do this job, and they're just amazing at it. Um, we've tried different things to deal with coyotes in the past. You know, when we were brand new to ranching, we tried a little bit of, of uh, hunting. Um, didn't really work out. Coyotes are incredibly smart. Uh, we've never tried poison, and I would never recommend that because you just don't know where that's going to go in the food chain. And, you know, your your dog might get a hold of it. You're, it's, it's just irresponsible in my mind. Uh, we did have, at one point, traps set by somebody for coyotes, and that was somewhat effective. Uh, it will catch the coyotes. Um, we'll also catch your loving farm dog. <laughs> that catches a, a nice scent and wants to go into that trap. So not really my favorite choice. Um, as far as things that we use to control predators, obviously I mentioned the Anatolian Shepherds and electric fence plays a huge role for us. Cannot recommend highly enough a uh, timeless fence with high tensile wire electric. You know, put a good high joule energizer on there. Um, that's going to be most of your protection along with the dogs. Uh, what it really comes down to is if we kill the coyotes, other coyotes are going to move in to fill their spot. So I, this is not my wisdom. It's wisdom borrowed from older ranchers. But you want a population of uh, coyotes that actually knows the rules, respects the electric fence, respects the dogs, and and just knows what the what the deal is you know the ones like i showed you earlier in that picture that take advantage of the fact when you get 60 mile an hour winds and your temporary fence blows down you know they pay the price because you have the dogs there as a backup uh, but you, you really want that population of coyotes that just respect those rules in in your uh, property they're incredibly intelligent animals so in my mind it takes another intelligence that's going to be out there 24 7 with them meaning the anatolian shepherds to uh balance out that that uh that role within the ecosystem um speaking of the ecosystem in my mind uh, coyotes and predators do have a role in our ecosystem absolutely uh they control populations of groundhogs mice rabbits uh you name it you know they, they kind of uh, control a lot of that and, and keep that in balance. So as long as everything's in balance, obviously, we have to keep it, you know, managed. You know, as stewards, we're created to be stewards of this earth and to subdue it. Um, you know, so we do have a role in balancing that system. But it is a system and we need to recognize that. Okay, now for other predators that we might deal with. Um, aerial predators is a bit of a concern for us. You know, we get some big old turkey vultures and, and hawks and eagles flying around uh, can be an issue with the small lambs, you know, first couple of days they're born. Uh, could also be an issue once we have chickens again and ducks and geese. So we're lucky to have Thor, <laughs> uh, who just absolutely hates aerial predators, loses his mind, will chase them around the entire property barking at him thinking he's going to be able to spontaneously fly at some point but he gets the job done so aerial predators are definitely a threat and again the anatolians deal with that really well uh, bears we don't have bears specifically at the property that we're at now that i know of i do know that uh, the population is growing throughout mark twain national forest in southern missouri conservation department's really slow to 
kind of keep up with admitting the the animals that we have in the area but that's that's something you have to deal with um, I would deal with them mainly through nose and noise and what I mean by that is you know that electric fence again timeless or this temporary fencing with a high jewel energizer on it bears just like canines lead with their nose they get a, a good six jewel jap jet or yeah, I can't speak English now a good six jewel zap on their uh, nose they're going to back off. They're going to go find something easier. Along with that would be these dogs. You know, they create all that noise, the barking. I've seen videos here on YouTube, Anatolians running off bears. Um, it's definitely an option, you know, that, that you can use. As far as mountain lions, we supposedly don't have them here. Um, but I would cite the example when I was researching Anatolian shepherds in the first place that uh, they're actually used to protect the big cats by keeping the big cats away from the livestock. Therefore, the farmers don't go out and kill the big cats. So again, that's that balance in the system. Um, last story that I would share with you on other predators that I've not experienced myself, but, but it's becoming an issue again since the reintroduction of wolves in North America are wolves. A uh, great friend of mine that trained our herding dog, Zoe, told me about uh, an entire population that was about a hundred years of breeding in these rams and they were wiped out by a pack of wolves and I asked him I said well what would you do about that because you've got a heavier stronger animal than coyotes and and the pack works very efficiently at killing and he said you have really just got to go all guns blazing with a whole lot of guardian dogs if that's your situation you know one of the last predators, unfortunately, that we have to deal with are two-legged predators. You know, people like to come in and steal livestock. So the dogs are very effective. Fence is fairly effective on that. Um, you know, in that zone, though, is just keeping things unpredictable, which reminds me of why rotational grazing is so important also with your predator issues. Um Back when I was early on looking into ranching again, Joel Saladin had a video where he talked about the fact that you basically move into a small area, you disrupt it, you scare the predators off in essence, and then you leave quickly before they get too comfortable around the livestock, the dogs, the fence, etc. So those are the best strategies that we have right now for dealing with predators. I hope this video has been helpful to you and uh, hope to have more to you soon. Thanks a lot. God bless.